Okay, so let's see if you know enough math to solve this problem. All right, so here is the question. We have a right triangle. So this little uh, box right here or this little square in the corner of this triangle indicates that this is a right triangle. Now, this is a big clue on what you need to do to solve this problem. But uh, this means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. All right, so I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem on your own. But uh, here are the sides of this right triangle. So this side right here is 3. The longest side, which is called the hypotenuse, is x plus 3. And this side right here is x plus 2. All right, so the actual question is we're trying to solve for x. So what is the value of x given this right triangle? Now, we do have a multiple choice question here, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our answers. So A is 2, B is 3, C is 4, and D is 5. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution. The correct answer here is A, X is equal to 2. All right, now, if you got this correct, well, you definitely got a happy face in the A+. Plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I once knew how to do this, but that was like 30 years ago when I was studying high school level geometry. Well, no big deal. This is not that difficult. And uh, what we're going to be doing here is reviewing some real basic principles of right triangles but we're going to need a little bit of algebra as well. All right, so this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get started right now. All right, so here is the problem. The key to solving this problem is um, uh, recognizing that this is a right triangle, okay? Uh, this is gonna make uh, this problem much, much easier to solve. Now, what is a right triangle? Well, when you have a figure of a triangle and it's like a little square in a corner, this indicates that it is right, okay, which means that that angle is 90 degrees, okay? Now, there's all different sorts of triangles you could have in a triangle like this. So this angle right here is more than 90 degrees. And this is important because if we have a 90 degree right triangle or a 90 degree angle in a triangle, we have a right triangle. We know a ton about right triangles, okay? And they're very, very uh, important in geometry. And I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what we need to know for uh, this particular problem. But again, when you have a right triangle indicated by this little thing right here, you want to be thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you didn't have a right triangle and you had something that was like, for example, an obtuse uh, triangle where an angle might be, let's say like 120 degrees, there are some other things that you can uh, bring to bear to solve these type of triangle problems, namely uh, the law of sines, the law of cosines, but that's a little bit more advanced uh, than what we need. And uh, I'll give you some suggestions if in fact you need to uh, you know, solve triangle problems using the law of sines and the law of cosines. Uh, these are hugely important in math as well but we don't need them. We can just simply use uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so again, this very well may be one of the most important, in my opinion. Now, of course, I only bring this up because the Pythagorean theorem is widely used in algebra, al uh, geometry, analytic uh, geometry, trigonometry. I mean, you have to understand this theorem. Now, of course, uh, this is derived from a famous mathematician, Pythagoras, but basically his theorem is the following. Okay, so he, we have a right triangle. Okay, so again, we have this little notation down there. This is 90 degrees. Now, we have the sides of a right triangle, A, B, and C, but the uh, most important thing about understanding these sides is that the longest length of a right triangle is always called the hypotenuse. Okay, this is the hypotenuse, and it's going to be opposite of where the right angle is at. Okay, so opposite meaning this way, but you can always uh, easily recognize it. It's always the longest uh, side of the right triangle, but you need to remember that because that will be our variable C. Okay, so what the Pythagorean theorem states is that if we square the shorter sides, okay, so this would be A squared, okay, if we square that and we add it to the square of this other side, that would be b squared, 
that's going to be equal to, and we add these two things up, these two sides up, we're going to square that plus the square of this. We add up these two values, that's going to be the same as the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And if you have any two values here, okay, if we have these two values, we can easily solve for this. If we have this value, we don't know this side, and we have this side, we can solve for that. But in this particular situation, uh, we have some variables going on here. So we're going to have to use some algebra uh, along with the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. So let's go ahead and take the next step, and let's identify our A, B, and C. Okay, so the uh, most important thing uh, here, again, is to know that the longest side is the hypotenuse will always be C when it comes to the Pythagorean theorem. This side could be A, or this side could be A, or this side could be uh, B, but it doesn't make a difference. I'll call this A, I'll call this B. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, and we're going to use these expressions right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared is the following. Okay, so a squared is going to be uh, x plus 2 squared. So this is our a squared plus b squared, okay, is what? Well, b is just 3. Okay, so that's going to be 3 squared. And c squared is going to be x plus 3 squared. All right, so now what we have is an algebraic uh, equation. So really what it comes down to at this point in the problem is can you solve this equation? Now if you are studying uh, a um, geometry, like in other words you're taking a full geometry course, or if you intend to take geometry, you must first uh, learn algebra, okay? Uh, at least one year of algebra because there is a lot of algebra in geometry. Okay, so this is what it comes down to. Can you solve for x? Because if we can solve for x here, we're going to be able to get these values, right? So if we solve for x, we're like, okay, I know the answer for x. So whatever x is, x plus 2 is this side, and then x plus 3 will be this side. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear understandable and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so we have x uh, a squared. So let's just kind of go back to our setup here. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, we are using the actual uh, values in this particular right triangle, and we want to solve for x. All right, so let's go ahead and take this part right here, x plus 2 squared. What is this equal to? Well, we're going to have to uh, use the FOIL method. So x plus 2 times x plus 2 is the same thing as x plus 2 squared. And here you can just use the FOIL method. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then we have 2x uh, again right here. So 2x and 2x is 4x. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Now, if you are struggling with the algebra, just check out all my um, the various courses. I'm, gonna leave, I'm going to leave the uh, links to them in the description below. So I would say for those of you that or, you know, at this level of math, you definitely want to check it like check out like my Algebra 1 course, okay? Uh, because that's what you need to take before you take a full geometry course, which course, if you're in, uh, you know, I have that as well. Okay, so x plus 2 squared or x plus 2 times x plus 2 is x squared plus 4x plus 4. 3 squared is, of course, going to be 9. Then x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. Again, x times x is x squared, x times 3, 3x, and then we have this other 3x, that's 6x, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So what we have here is x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 9 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, so it looks like we're dealing with a quadratic equation, but not so fast because we uh, once we clean this equation up, 
some of you could be like, well, chemistry, you too, math, man, uh, should we, uh, you know, add these numbers together right here? And, you know, you maybe you might just kind of start thinking about quadratic equations. That's excellent. But what you want to do really is to say, hey, are there any opportunities to make this uh, equation simpler? Well, notice here I have x squared and x squared. Okay, now if I subtract x squared from both sides, uh, these x squareds are going to go away. Anytime you have the exact same terms on either side of the equation, these effectively cancel each other out. So I can just get rid of these x squared. And notice I have two nines right here. I can just get rid of those as well because if I subtract nine from both sides of the equation, the nines go away. So that just leaves me with this nice, lovely linear equation, 4x plus 4. Uh, is equal to 6x. Okay, that's going to be far easier to solve than messing around with these x squareds. All right, so x, uh, 4x squared plus 4 is equal to 6x. So pretty straightforward stuff here. I can simply subtract 4x from both sides of the equation, and uh, we're going to end up with 4 is equal to 2x. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x will be equal to 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this value now because we're not done, but let's use what we uh, now know, x is equal to two to figure out the actual answer. Okay, so here is our right triangle. So this is three. So if this, if x is equal to two, what's gonna be this side right here? So it's gonna be x plus three or two plus three, which of course is five, okay? And then this side right here would be two, uh, x is two. So this would be two plus two, which of course would be four. And this would represent the, uh, uh, what we call a Pythagorean triple, three, four, five, because these are all lovely integer values. And we can check this real quick, right? Let's just actually check this. Remember, the longest side of uh, or the, uh, the biggest uh, um, measure here is always the hypotenuse. So if this is correct, I'll just do this super fast right here. So this is three, four, and five. So let's check these values using the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a would be 3 squared, right, plus b, which would be 4 squared, okay? And is this going to be equal to c, which is going to be 5 squared, all right? Let's go ahead and do this math here real quick. So 3 squared, of course, is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 is equal to 25. That is true, indicating that, indeed, these values are correct for this particular right triangle. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.